Estimada Presidenta del Parlamento Europeo. President of the European Parliament, President of the Commission, High Representative, ladies and gentlemen. This morning we woke up to the news of the atrocious attack on the Al Ali Hospital, which has left, which has caused hundreds of Palestinian victims. Hospitals and civilians cannot be a target. The suffering of the civilian population of Gaza needs to end. We also are deeply moved, shocked by the terrible terrorist attack that Israel suffered on the 7th of October, which caused over 2,000 dead and 200 hostages, and we call for the immediate and unconditional release of those hostages. We would like to express our solidarity and support to the victims of, uh, to the families of all victims, their loved ones, and the friends of Israel and Palestine. I'd also like to express my condolences to France, Belgium, and Sweden for the terrible attacks suffered during the last couple of days. We need to preserve cohesion, tolerance, and understanding in our society, because that is what Europe stands for. This is a very serious situation, and Europe needs to be faithful to its principles, supporting the fight against terrorism and acting to support the civilian population. We need to fly the flag of international humanitarianism, and we also need to fly the flag of, flag of peace. That's what our citizens expect of us, and so do our friends and partners across the world. We firmly, without ifs and buts, condemn these acts of terrorism and violence. Barbarity cannot triumph. We recognize Israel's right to defend itself against this terrorist attack. This defense needs to take place with the most scrupulous respect for international humanitarian law. The civilian population cannot be a victim. We need to allow humanitarian access to Gaza. We need to ensure basic supplies for the population, water, electricity, food, medicines. We need, at all costs, to avoid escalation in the humanitarian crisis in Gaza. Our friends and partners across the world expect the voice and actions of Europe to be raised and for us to act in, in accordance with that desire. We cannot allow the forced displacement of hundreds of thousands of people. We have to, we must at all times distinguish between terrorist objectives and the civilian population. Assistance and cooperation from Europe to the Palestinian National Authority and the people of Palestine shouldn't be interrupted. In fact, it should be boosted. And therefore, the Commission announcement to, of the tripling of humanitarian assistance is very important. That's what our citizens expect, and that's what our partners across the world expect. With that goal, Spanish assistance will be further provi providing a further 4 million euros to Palestine by the end of the year, added to the 21 million already provided. Humanitarian principles need to be emphasized clearly in the same way as we affirm and continue to affirm our condemnation of terrorism and Israel's rights to defend itself against terrorism, because that is precisely what distinguishes nations that love peace from terrorists. We need to differentiate between Hamas and the Palestinian people and the Nas Palestinian National Authority. We shouldn't confuse Hamas with the legitimate leadership of the Palestinians. The Palestinian Authority has for a long time been Europe's partner for peace. Hamas does not represent the Palestinian people. During these terrible moments, we must at all costs avoid the regional extension of the conflict. Europe and Spain are committed to peace and stability in the region. Our number one goal needs to be maintaining peace and stability in the West Bank 
and in Lebanon. The situation in Lebanon is of particular concern. This is a fragile country. The UN force commanded by the Spanish general Lazaro is doing extraordinary work in very difficult circumstances to comply with its mandate and maintain stability in the region. Europe needs to stand shoulder to shoulder with Lebanon, basing ourselves on an agenda of peace and stability. We need a vision of Lebanon as a state, which is the necessary condition for the people there to be able to face the challenges that they face, that they have. We cannot allow anyone to make use of this tragedy for their own ends. But we also, today, need to start thinking about the day when this new latest spiral of violence ends. We need to put an end to this tragedy, which has taken place too many times. We need to find a solution for once and for all, the two-state solution, Israel and Palestine, living in peace and security, one next to the other. And this requires a definitive agreement in line with agreements that have already been signed and parameters agreed since the, during the conference in Madrid. Once we overcome this crisis, we need to move forward with this agenda urgently. Emotions are running high, and sometimes these emotions are contradictory, and it's precisely because of that that we need to be particularly responsible and particularly careful with regard to what we say and how we say it when we say it too. Europe firmly condemns terrorism and violence and we'd like to express our solidarity with the victims without distinguishing between their religion and nationality. Europe is mobilizing to promote firm humanitarian action based in the universal values of humanity. Europe needs to act together to demand that this tragedy is not repeated, and this will only be possible if we can offer the Palestinian people and also the people of Israel a perspective based on a credible and definitive peace. And this requires a two-state solution, the Israeli state and the Palestinian state living together in peace and security. That's what the peoples of the region and the world have wanted for decades. I firmly believe that. Our friends in the region and our citizens expect clarity and firmness from the European Union, a firm commitment against terrorism, against violence, a firm commitment to peace, to justice, to humanity. And we need to come together with all parties and with our Arab and international partners to ensure that this genuinely is the last time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Minister. I give the floor now to the High Representative for Foreign Affairs, Josep Borrell. Josep, you have the floor.